What's up you link building legends? I have some pretty bad news guys. Link building is dead. Nah guys, come on, I'm just playing. Let's talk about some of the most successful link building strategies that I've used and how you guys can use them as well. The first thing we're gonna talk about is guest posting and link exchanges. But wait guys, because these aren't actually link building strategies. So these are just two methods that we use to finalize those link building agreements. But these come at the end of a long process. And the process starts with probably the most important thing which is how do we find and sort through good backlinks. So guys, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna walk you guys through two different ways that you guys can find great backlink opportunities. Also guys, a really quick note on guest posting. This is pretty important. If you guys are still looking for websites that have right for us directly on their website content or openly talk about the fact that they accept guest posts on their website, most likely Google knows about these websites and the links you're getting from these websites might be worth us. So that's something to take into account. We need to be smarter about how we do link building in 2022. Anyway, the first way involves dissecting our competitors backlinks. So let's get right into Ahrefs and we're gonna pretend that I just wrote a blog post about keto pies and I wanna get some backlinks directly to that blog post. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in keto pie directly into Ahrefs into the Keywords Explorer and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to find those competitors. So these guys look like they have some pretty solid backlinks coming in, also a lot of domains. Uh, what sticks out to me is these two guys. So this guy right here, Wholesome Yum, 187 domains and Rule Dump Me, 99 domains. So I'm gonna start with this guy right here. So he has 99 referring domains. And again, why do we open the domains instead of clicking into the backlinks? I like to do that because it allows me to see the quality of all the domains instead of having to sort through backlinks one by one. We also have the option of looking at specific backlinks in this view. So I am gonna add a filter just like we talked about in part one of this video. We do want links that are do follow. So now we have 63 links and then I'm gonna sort by the domain rating. So now we're gonna say we have 63 results, which is pretty cool. We can do a lot of things while we're here, but the main thing I wanna do is filter through and find that ideal link that I'd like to contact. So what is that ideal link made out of? As we talked about in the last video, domain rating is important, but guys, a note on that. If we see a potential backlink, for example, this guy right here, fillmyrecipebook.com, we're looking at a domain rating of seven, but if this website is relevant and has potential, we need to know that that domain rate metric can grow over time. So if we see a website with potential, they're publishing a lot of content, they're getting a lot of traffic, but right now they don't have a lot of links, that might be a great investment to get now. That link might get really powerful over time. So anyway, we are looking for authority. We do wanna make sure that these backlinks are relevant. That's really, really important in 2022. And the icing on the cake will be that these links had traffic coming in. To see that, we can click into the links to target and we can see exactly what's the URL of the incoming link, the UR rating, so what's the strength of that specific URL, and we can see the traffic. So we are gonna see that finding that perfect link, a link that's relevant, that has authority, that has traffic, and passes all the other filters is gonna be really hard. But we do see that this link specifically is in content. So this is a phenomenal link, even though it doesn't have traffic coming in. So we're gonna scroll through all of these, see if we find anything interesting. Another thing we can do is export this right here, export this to Microsoft Excel and do everything there. We're then gonna do the same for as many competitors as we'd like. So we go back to the Keywords Explorer, open up all these competitors and basically create a big list of potential websites that we're interested in getting a backlink from. But guys, what's the logic here? Why are we targeting websites that already have backlinks to our competitors? So the reason why we're doing this is given that they've already linked out to a competitor, there is a chance that they can link out to us. It might not be specifically for the same competing blog post that they've linked out to our competitors for, but their websites that are in the space that are relevant and that have already proven that they link out to our competitors. So these are websites where it's in our best interests to create relationships and to have those contacts for a possible collaboration, whether that's now or in the future. So that's something that we need to take into account. Once we have that really long list of websites, we would then pass over to the outreach stage. But before we dive into the outreach stage, I wanna quickly show you guys the second way that I used to find great backlink opportunities. So in this case, we're gonna be using the Content Explorer. I feel like this is a feature within Ahrefs that not a lot of people talk about. It's an incredible feature. It's basically a humongous database of hundreds of millions of web pages. And within each web page, they have a bunch of data that's super, super relevant. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna type in that topic. I've already typed it in right here. So keto recipes, keto pie, whatever it is, we can type that in. And then we're gonna see this huge assortment of pages. 
pages. So we have 906,000 pages. That's a lot. We want to add some filters to find exactly what we're looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some referring domains. I want to have at least 10 referring domains in the search. I'm also going to add some traffic. Would be cool if these pages were getting at least 50 clicks a month. That's going to show me that's a page with real authority in the space and a 20 in DR just as a minimum. Again, you guys can play with these filters as much as you'd like. I'm setting this up like this just to show you guys an example. So now we have 9,600 pages, but pages that are coming up for the filters that we've selected. So what we're going to see here is the actual listing. So we see Reddit here, the domain rating, the referring domains, page traffic, and the traffic value. The important thing here is we do want to scroll down, just check the page traffic, but we want to take a look at these referring domains. So these are referring domains that we can contact because we know that they've already linked out to a website in the same space that we're in. So it's a great way to quickly find potential backlinks and potential people that we can form relationships with for future collaborations. Let's talk about the outreach stage for a second, guys. This is basically the same for most link building strategies. So it's important to make sure that we've got the basics down. So there's three main things I want to talk about. The first one is to make sure that we're sending that email to the right person. Once you guys start using Hunter, Hunter is a great tool because it's going to give you a huge collection of emails that is connected to that website that you're interested in contacting. However, this can come at a disadvantage because when we have all those emails, it's hard to pick the specific person that we want to target. The main rule that we want to follow here is we want to always try to contact a person. So if there's an email that's personalized to a specific name, we want to try and target that person. We never want to send emails to support at domain or contact at domain unless it's that last resort because most likely those emails aren't going to get read. We want to try and find the most relevant person to contact for that specific website. The second thing is we want to make sure that we're personalizing these emails and we're not just sending a generic email to 100 people asking for links. That's going to be a huge waste of contacts. We want to make sure that we take the time and show the reader that we actually care about them and we really want to build that connection and that relationship for a possible collaboration. And then guys, once the outreach stage has gone successfully, so once you've reached out to that website that you're interested in, you've written a proper outreach email and the back and forth has gone successfully, that's when you decide with the other person whether they'd like to do a guest blog or a link exchange. It's really important to make sure that we have the first part down, which is actually finding those backlinks and then going through with a successful outreach stage. It's not only about mass emailing hundreds of people asking for a guest blog. So let's talk about Harrow or help a reporter out. So this is a service where you basically sign up to get daily emails from reporters and from journalists where they're looking for sources for their story. This is a specific page where you go to. I'll add the link in the description of this video. And we'd basically like to sign up for this basic plan. And then we're going to see emails like this one. There's basically going to be a huge list of a bunch of stories from journalists journalists and they're looking for sources for all of these. There's going to be a name, a category and an email which you can reach out to and then the deadline and the specific query that they're looking for. So give this a read. If you are an HR leader or a mental health leader who can talk about five things you should do if you're experiencing a work burnout, if you can be a source for the specific journalist, there is a chance that they feature you on decently sized websites. So when you sign up for Hero, you can basically select the specific categories that you're interested in. So it's a really interesting way of getting backlinks. This is something that you can do pretty passively. You can check those emails for five minutes a day. I am going to link to a great article written by Ahrefs, a case study that's, that talks a lot more about Hero, So definitely look for that in the description. The final strategy that we're going to talk about is broken link building. This is a strategy that involves a little bit more work, but guys, I've seen some incredible results with broken link building. So let's take a look at how we would do this. The main thing we need to take into account for broken link building is we want to target a really big competitor. We're basically looking for pages that used to have content, that used to have traffic and that have gained a bunch of links over time, but that page doesn't exist anymore for whatever reason. Perhaps they did a redirect and that redirect is broken or they just accidentally deleted that page. It really doesn't matter. The main thing is that we're looking for those broken pages that have acquired a bunch of links and we want to contact those people with a replacement article or blog post. So what we do is we find a really big competitor. So for this example, I'm going to use allrecipes.com and we're going to go all the way down to Best Buy links. Once we're in the Best Buy links page, we're going to sort by HTTP code. So we're looking for those 404s, right? The not found. Once we've added that filter, now we're going to see 
a variety of URLs that have a bunch of referring domains, but have a 404 code. So let's take this guy for example, how to make pasta dough. Looks like they have 56 referring domains and 21 do follow external links. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this URL and we're gonna type in web.archive.org. We're gonna put this guy inside of the Wayback Machine. We're just gonna select any of the blue snapshots. Looks like this page was active in 2016. And the main thing that we're doing here is we want to try and basically recreate that content and then reach out to the people that are linking out to that 404 page. So now what we can see here is we can see the content of how this was built, what the type of content was, and we can go out, we can recreate that page and then start an outreach process to tell those websites that are linking out to this resource that they're actually linking out to a broken page and that they should instead link out to your resource since it's an updated and improved version. Even though broken link building is gonna be a lot more work, a lot of these links are gonna be extremely relevant and really powerful. If you guys haven't heard about reverse link building, I recommend you guys check out this video. And if you guys have any more suggestions for link building videos, please leave them down in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one.